So Easter's over. The resurrection has taken place. Your life has had this awesome crescendo until Sunday, and you get to celebrate with your family. You talk to your children and your siblings and your parents about Jesus and his resurrection. You, you celebrate the day you have meals together, and then it's over. And so you may be asking, well, now what? What do we do now? How do we, how do we maintain the excitement of his resurrection? Well, I guess the really good news is that he lived for you, right? He didn't, he didn't just die for you, but he lived for you. And so in his death, you are putting to putting away your old self, you are um, putting to death your old ways, and you are now living for him. And so that's how we are to live. We're supposed to walk in the way of the Lord. One of the passages I want to share with you from Philippians chapter 2. Paul says this, Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if there's any affection and compassion, if there's any way that I can embolden you to live out your faith, if there's anything that I can appeal to, I want to do it. That's what he's saying. He says, make my joy complete by being in the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit and intent on one purpose. And I just had to stop here this week when I got to this verse because my mind came just a flood of doubts of how we could possibly do this without being together. And thankfully, in the, in the flood of the doubts came the word pray. Because if we want to be in one mind, one body, Together, the, the only way to do that is to pray. Because it's not us, but the Spirit that holds us together. It's not us, but it's Jesus Christ who we live for. So he says, live this way. Verse 3, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. Don't live this way. That kills unity. Instead, with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. So if I were to think of a few things that we can do now, after the resurrection, first is to pray and to keep praying for those around us who are without a paycheck, without food to pray for those. And the second thing that really comes to mind is that we see needs and we meet those needs. Right? If you have been blessed in this time, then our call is to be a blessing. It is to take the extra that we have and to share. In, in Acts 2, um, Luke recounts the way the disciples lived. And they shared with anyone who had need, and if they had any extra, they gave it to those who had less. And that's where we are right now. And so as a church, I know that you are a praying church, and I felt that, and I've heard those prayers. And I know that you guys are a generous church because we've seen money and donations just keep coming in the door. And... But what I want you to do now is not just, not just send them our way, but as you see the need in your neighborhood, if you see the need um, you know, at the store, meet that need. Bless them. If you've been blessed, be a blessing. And I want to encourage you to continue to pray. Pray and pray and pray without ceasing. And walk in a manner worthy of the Lord.